Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tech Tips Live. It's a cloudy Thursday afternoon here in Goshen, and we are doing this. I'm in my living room. Uh, I think Jacob's probably uh, someplace at his home, and some of you may be in your offices, some of you may be remote. Uh, interesting times here. But a uh, little normalcy, we're going to do Tech Tips Live and uh, show you some of the new things that we have going on with Dynamic Reports 2. So Jacob, would you go ahead and advance to the next slide? Jacob's running things from his location. There we go, all right. Again, I'll be your host today. Jacob Shetler will run us through this. Uh, for the last few Tech Tips Live, I've done a little longer introduction. Today, I'm gonna dispense with that. We're going to dive right into Jacob's explanation and, and demonstration of things. We will do some time for questions and answers. And then with time left, we want to, I want to go over a few of the things that Herschler Systems is doing. You have, none of you, we have not sent out an email to all of our customers. Uh, we felt like everybody's probably gotten enough emails from their hotels and airlines and supermarkets and all that about what they're doing with the current situation. So we do want to bring you up to date. Uh, as some of our, our active and important clients, and uh, we'll do that at the end of today's session. So I will stop talking now and put myself on mute, and Jacob, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Phil. Uh, as Phil said, we're going to be talking about Dynamic Reports 2 today. Uh, that was released in Game Seeker version 9.3. This is a replacement for the Dynamic Reports application, which is now a legacy app. So the, the old Dynamic Reports, we're no longer going to be putting development effort into that one. Uh, Dynamic Reports 2 includes a greatly enhanced reporting engine that is both much faster and much more stable than the one that was included in Dynamic Reports. You can still use all of your old Dynamic Reports uh, reports inside of Dynamic Reports 2. So don't worry about if you're upgrade, then you might be just like throwing time down the drain for uh, all the time that you spent creating reports in the legacy application. It'll all be uh, imported into the new one. Some other great benefits of Dynamic Reports 2 uh, includes using custom statistics in Python while you're creating reports. You can even use the same external data scripts, so you use in GS charts or dashboards to generate highly personalized reports. So we're going to spend almost the entire Tech Tips Live, or my portion of it, in a demo of Dynamic Reports 2. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Jacob, I did get a report that our audio is, is fairly quiet and I've moved a little closer to my microphone. So make sure that uh, you're speaking loudly so everybody can hear you. Okay, got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Dynamic Reports 2. You can see that this has taken the place of the old Dynamic Reports inside of Launchpad. So the first time that you come into to Dynamic Reports 2, uh, it's going to give you a welcome message and tell you that this is replacing the old uh, legacy dynamic reports and that it's going to import all your existing reports into DR2. This import also does a conversion and a copy from dynamic reports too. So these will actually be separate reports from what you're used to, uh, from what you can view inside of dynamic reports. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click yes, import my existing reports. Uh, the other options are maybe you just want to start fresh and don't want to deal with the existing reports that you had, or maybe you're not the right person to answer this question and you can uh, do it later. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. This uh, screen is, shows me all the reports and all the retrievals that were imported and converted from the legacy dynamic reports. Uh, this, I just have a very small configuration set up, and so this is, only has one report with one retrieval in it, but uh, your list could be much longer than this. And now we're ready to start using Dynamic Reports 2. 
If you, on the off chance, you click the wrong button, when you're doing the import, you can always go back and import all of your legacy reports by going to the file menu and then clicking on import all legacy reports. And that'll do the same process as what we just did. So one of the first things you might notice about Dynamic Reports 2 is that there are no longer tabs for the different report types. And that's because everything is the same report type now. And you can share retrievals between all those reports. So once you start a report using SPC or DMS data, it's very easy to switch it over to use the other type of data. Uh, another major difference between Dynamic Reports 2 and Legacy Dynamic Reports is how easy it is to share retrievals between reports. So you might have some shift information or standard information that you include in a lot of your reports. And now you don't have to reset up or recopy that information into every new report that you create, or if you want to add it to an existing report. You can just specify that you want that information in the report because each report is made up of a list of retrievals and those retrievals can be shared between reports. Uh, on the main form here, there's four big buttons that you can click on. Uh, the first one is view. This just opens up a viewer of the report. Edit view. This replaces the prompt functionality in legacy dynamic reports. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So you can see that this looks a lot like the edit open for dashboards or desktops, where you can change date periods, filters, uh, and then standards for different retrievals before you view the report. The designer, we'll go into that later. This is how you edit a report's layout. And then edit retrievals. So when you click on edit retrievals, this is a list of the data that is used to build the report. Uh, this should look familiar if you're used to using mixed reports in legacy DR. On the left side here, we've got a list of all of the retrievals that have been selected for this report. Uh, and then you can edit the retrievals or you can add or remove them from this report. And I'll show you how that works in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and create a new report. So I go to File, New Report. I'll name this one Demo. And now I'm ready to start adding data sets or retrievals into my report. So I'm going to click Add. And this screen that kind of came up shows me all the retrievals that belong to all the reports that I have inside of my Game Seeker configuration. So this is uh, how we've made it much easier to share data between reports. Um, I don't want to use the existing retrieval that I have, so I'm going to click New and show you how uh, you can use custom stats in a report. So I'm going to create a new SPC retrieval, and we'll call this one custom stat. We'll go ahead and pick a part. And then under the statistics tab, I go ahead and show the full list. I have a uh, custom st statistic set up that just generates a random number between 0 and 100 and returns it. So it's pretty good for demo purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose that stat. Uh, I'll save this retrieval. I'll click OK to add the custom stat retrieval into my report. And then I'm going to click Save and Design. This will bring up the designer. So the designer looks almost the same as it does in uh, the legacy dynamic reports. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this random stat onto here. Uh, it says it wants to sum it, but I'm just going to have it display the first value. I'm going to go ahead and, and Save and view this report. And there it is. So if I refresh this report a couple times, you'll see that the, the number is changing. 
And that's the Python engine running in the background, calculating your custom statistic every time you uh, want to view this report. So the other powerful thing that you can do with Python is uh, use a new retrieval type that we've added in Dynamic Reports 2 called scripted retrievals. I'm going to exit back out a little bit here. Go ahead and save that. And up in the file menu, there's a option called manage retrievals. If I click on this, this brings me up to the list of all the retrievals that are in my system. Uh, that way I can modify them without having to try and find a report that one of the retrievals belongs to. So I'm going to create another new one and we'll use a scripted retrieval this time. So I'm going to create a scripted SPC retrieval. I'm going to name this one like Python demo. And this is a list of all the external data scripts that I have in my configuration that retrieve uh, or display SPC data. And this is the same list of external data scripts that you can view in dashboards or in GS charts. So I already have this script created, but I'll open it up here so you can see what it does. Uh, this is a pretty simple script. It creates a window that has a single text box in, box in it. When the user enters the number and clicks OK, we create a really simple data set that just has one data point in it. That's whatever number the user typed in with a part number of Python part number. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then we'll close. And now that I've created this retrieval, can highlight my demo report, click Edit Retrievals, and click Add, and then choose my script. So the other way I could have done this is I could have clicked on Demo, opened up Edit Retrievals, and then clicked Add, and just added my uh, retrieval that way. But I wanted to show the other way that you can get to designing retrievals for reports. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to click Design on Demo. So to show you what the users type it in, I'm going to drop a table in here. Uh, and then the table will use uh, the Python demo retrieval or data source. So we'll show the date, time, and the part number and then whatever the user typed in. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and view it. So you can see that the Python script is running, and while the report is being generated in the background, the script is asking for user input. So let's go ahead and enter a number in. 42 is always a good option. We'll click OK. And now you can see in this table down here, underneath my random number, I've got this number that I've typed in. And then every time that you go back into this report, that Python script runs again. So you can do whatever type of uh, user input that you need through Python scripts. Other things that you can do with Python scripts are include uh, getting data from any of your external systems, just like you can in dashboards. So uh, with Python in Dynamic Reports 2, you can now include data from pretty much anywhere. Uh, you have an ERP system, MES. You've got in-house databases or systems. You can pull all of that data into a single report or as many port reports as you want uh, in GameSeeker using Python with Dynamic Reports too. So Jacob, could I throw throw a scenario in here for you? Sure. So with that input and you're just doing keyboard input, yep. in theory, someone could also have a report, they could have different lots coming through, and, and maybe they don't have it in their ERP, but they have a barcode carrier or something like that. With a wedge keyboard, uh, barcode reader, boom, you hit the key, you hit the, the uh, barcode, throws it in the report, ready to go, no typing, no fuss, right? 
Yep, absolutely. Fantastic. So in, in what Phil was talking about there, uh, after you get the keyboard or the uh, barcode input, you could build a custom filter using Python and then use that to retrieve a certain data set to build the report. That's it for the demo. So I'm gonna flip back to the slideshow here. So a lot of the report formatting documentation isn't covered in our help file, uh, but there's a link to it from Dynamic Reports 2 under the help menu. Uh, and there's also a link in our help file to the uh, Active Reports 13 help, which is the reporting engine that we use. You can also use hertzler.com slash Active Reports 13 help to get information on how to build reports. Uh, and one other note is that the legacy Dynamic Reports app for now is still included in GameSeeker installations. So it's underneath the RW legacy folder wherever your GameSeeker program files are installed. So just to review what we talked about with GameSeeker uh, version 9.3, we added Dynamic Reports 2. Existing reports that you had are copied, imported, and converted to the new report format when you open Dynamic Reports 2. There's a new reporting structure. And now all reports that you have are part of this, are the same type. There's no more clicking between tabs trying to remember uh, where your report was. Using Python with Dynamic Reports 2, you can integrate custom statistics and external data. And overall, it's much faster, easier to work with, and a lot more stable than Dynamic Reports was. I think we've got time for some questions here. Yeah, if you have any uh, questions, please put them in the chat window, and uh, you can send them to the host or, or go to the q and A. I I had the uh, first one here, Jacob. So. You go through, you run it the first time, you do the import, and then maybe somebody else in your on your team or group on another computer logged in does the same thing. Are we going to overwrite the original or get a second copy or did we test? What, what's going to happen there? Do you know? Yeah. So if you've done it before and you go click that button that says import all legacy reports, it's going to ask you, are you really sure you want to do this? Because it's going to create copies of all of them in the new one. So you'll have duplicates of all your legacy reports if you do it more than once. All right. So not the end of the world to have duplicates. It doesn't overwrite anything, at least, I guess. It doesn't overwrite anything. <laughs> all right. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone else have any other uh, questions here? Do we, uh, are we, what external data sources have we tested this with Jacob? Or uh, I guess we're feeling like anything that we have Python, we can run pipes into, we can uh, also include with uh, Python that way. Yeah, I mean, if you've got files, that are written out somewhere, CSV files or Excel files, we can read those. Uh, if you have your other systems, if you have a database connection into them, or if you have uh, an ex if they have an external API, uh, we can hit that using Python. So yeah, pretty much anything. Okay, I've got one here. Um, so in dynamic reports, I'm I'm hearing the producer in my earpiece. 
with uh, with dynamic reports they have a web page that describes their scripting language and how things have changed between the two is that does that prompting sound familiar to you jacob oh yeah yep so in between uh data dynamics which was the reporting engine we used in dynamic reports and active reports 13 which is the engine that's used in dynamic reports 2 there were a couple minor scripting changes that were breaking changes between those two versions uh, most of these changes probably aren't going to affect uh, many of our customers but we do have a web page that's linked to from our help file uh, in version 9.3 and beyond that explains what those changes are and how to fix them if you would run into them. Okay. By overall, by and large, the transition between the two versions from dynamic reports to dynamic reports too with the import, et cetera, is, is clean, is pretty clean. There are just a few commands. Okay. Yep, it is. Excellent. All right, we still have some time for some other questions. If anybody else wants to throw some out here. If not, my producer might get in my ear again. <laughs> Not seeing anything. Jacob, why don't you go ahead and go on to the next slide? So I just want to give everybody a little bit of an update. We are open, Hertzler Systems, we're going to stay open. We are working remotely. The most the most advantageous way to get a hold of us is simply to email us. Many of you on the phone here, on the phone, on the WebEx today, you know our individual emails and you know they're pretty much all our first names at Hertzler. But in general, if maybe you have a question, support, sales, accounting, those are all constantly monitored. Uh, our phone system at the office is older. It does not do well with forwarding. And so we are working mostly with email. Uh, using WebEx, using those types of things. So uh, we'd suggest, we'd ask you not necessarily leave voicemail messages for us. We will check those, but uh, would ask that you email us uh, either directly or at these three addresses. Okay, next slide, Jacob. Just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a highlight Obviously, like all companies, we are committed to the safety of our employees. We understand too that where we're at, it is impacting our ability to work on site. And uh, we're going to have to delay some work with all of you uh, and others out there. First and foremost, we want to take care of the safety of our team members. We also are hearing different things from our customers. Some are saying, you know, no external contractors in, having us sign documents that we haven't been out of the country or where we've been, et cetera. We obviously will comply with all those things. If we have to, if, if you have to, if you have a, a project with us and we've scheduled something in the past, sometimes we, we do have cancellation fees. You know, in the near term, folks, those are waived. We obviously are not going to hold anybody to scheduling uh, for the next few weeks and months. Who knows how long this is going to go? And if we had something, we we're going to come on site. We will work with you to do as much of the work as we can remotely. Uh, it isn't ideal. We don't, obviously, we don't get the feel for what's going on, but uh, we can. There are a lot of instances where we can work remotely. And if we can't do it remotely, we will postpone it until things are safe to be out on the road again and to be mixing and mingling. So we do expect that it's highly likely that we're gonna to get to the end of this. And a lot of you are gonna have projects backed up. We only have so many people. 
and uh, we will be working with all of you, you know, kind of first come first serve basis, but also understanding, uh, taking into consideration client situations and uh, everyone's availability as we schedule things out. So, again, keeping with a little normalcy, the third Thursday of April, uh, Jacob will be joining me again, and we'll be talking about smart barcode readers. Uh, I think those were, uh, that was a zebra you're using, right, Jacob? Jacob's got himself muted. Yeah, that's correct. I'm... All right. Uh, a zebra with a, yeah, an Android device attached to that. And so we'll show you uh, some custom programming, some custom web pages we did for a client and how that works with Gainseeker. Uh, really a pretty slick implementation. Thanks so much for joining us. I will uh, have a, a rec this recording posted here probably uh, in the next few days, and uh, all of you can, can replay it or send it around with others. But thank you so much for joining us. I hope that uh, you all are able to keep things going. I know these are crazy times for all of us. We appreciate you taking some time. All the best, and uh, hope to see you all in a month and hear from you then. Thanks a lot, folks.